In this video, you will be introduced to working with a built-in approval workflow. The approval workflow routes a document or list item to specify people for approval. This workflow can be used in business processes such as a product specification approval or a vacation request approval. The approval workflow makes an approval business process more efficient by managing and tracking all of the human tasks involved with the process and by providing a record of the process after it is completed. Before a workflow can be used, it must be added to the list or library in order to be made available for those documents or items. In most cases, site administrators or site owners will perform this task. This does not require any technical or programming skills. You are basically using a workflow template and supplying required information. For this demonstration, we will create an approval workflow for a document library named Specifications. Before documents can be seen by the site users, they must be reviewed and approved by the designated approvers. Before creating the workflow, I want to point out the permission level of the users who will be involved with uploading, approving, and viewing the documents in this demonstration. So we'll view the permissions for this site by choosing Site Actions and then Site Permissions. Users in the DMI Members group have Contribute permissions and are able to upload documents to the library. In this demonstration, I will sign in as Jim Halpert to upload a document for approval. The designated approvers must be in an approvers group with approval permission level. And I will be using Andy, Phyllis, and Stanley as approvers for this demonstration. I will also demonstrate what a user with read-only permission to the library sees before and after a document is approved. For that, I will be signing in as Aaron Hannon. So I'll return to the sales page. So the first thing I must do to add this workflow to the library is to open the library specifications. And in order for the approval workflow to work, the option to require content approval must be turned on in the library. To do that, I click on the library tab at the top, go to library settings, and then versioning settings, and in the top, area here for content approval, I'll change this to yes to require content approval for submitted items. I'll go to the bottom, choose OK to save. And then I'll use the breadcrumb trail to return to the library. To get started adding the workflow, I'll click on the library tab at the top. Then on the far right, I'll click on this icon which is workflow settings. Workflows that were already created for this library would appear at the top of this page. However, a message displays indicating there are no workflows associated to this library. So to create a new workflow, I'll click on the link, Add a Workflow. The first step is to select the workflow template that I want to use. And there is a list here to select the workflow template. If I click on any of these template names, a brief description will display here on the right. Here you see the five templates available with SharePoint Server 2010. Collect Feedback, Approval, which we'll be using, Collect Signatures, Three State, and Disposition Approval. So I'm selecting the Approval template. Next, I need to give the workflow a name, and I'm going to call this Specification Approval. Next, I must specify a task list to use with this workflow. When a workflow is run, it creates tasks for people such as approving a document. Those tasks can be stored in the default task list for the site or have a new task list created specifically for the workflow. I'm going to leave this at the default task list. The workflow also requires a history list. The history list displays all of the events that occur during each instance of the workflow. You will be able to select a history list from a previous workflow if one already exists or the only choice I have is to create a new history list. In the Start Options section, specify how the workflow will be initiated for each document. The default selection is to start a workflow manually. We can leave that checked, even though my preference is to start the workflow automatically when a new document is created. And then I'll choose Next. In the Approvers section, I identify the users and or groups to whom I want to assign the workflow tasks for approval. 
Groups include both SharePoint and Active Directory security groups. In this demonstration, there will be two levels of approval. And in the first level, there will be two people to review the specified document. So I'm click on the Browse button, and I'll enter the first name, which is Phyllis. Phyllis Vance, and the second person is Stanley. So we have Phyllis Vance and Stanley Hudson. And just as a reminder, I did point out that these two names were in that Approvers Permission group. When multiple people are selected at one approval level, then you also select what order they approve the document. The default is one at a time, also referred to as serial. With this option selected, Phyllis would first receive a task notification to approve the document. Once she approves it, then Stanley will receive a task notification to approve the document. The other option is all at once, also called parallel. Since I want them to be notified at the same time to review and approve the document, I will choose all at once. After a document is approved by Phyllis and Stanley, then it requires a final approval from a third person, Andy Bernard. To add the second level of approval, I'll click on Add a New Stage, and a new Approvers line is added. And again, I'll use the Browse button to locate Andy's name. I'll double click his name to select it, and then choose OK. So Andy will be assigned a task to approve the document only after Phyllis and Stanley have both approved the document. If user groups were assigned as approvers rather than individuals, the Expand Groups option assigns the approval task to every individual in a group. In the Request box, you can type a message that will appear with each task notification. So I'll add a message here. So I've added my message, please review and approve submit a document. In the due date for all tasks, you can enter a specific date for all tasks to be completed. In duration per task, I'll enter a three to allow three days for each person to review and approve a document from the time they receive their task notification. Duration units defaults to days, which is what I want. However, you can also choose weeks and months. In the CC field, you can select users to be copied when a workflow starts and ends, such as a manager. You want to select the option End on First Rejection when you want the workflow to be terminated if any one of the approvers rejects the document. And I will select this option. You want to select End on Document Change when you want the workflow to stop if any one of the approvers changes the document. And I'm not going to select this one and select this last option, Enable Content Approval, if you want to automatically update the approval status of the document from pending to approved after the workflow is completed. And I will select this. A document will not be visible to users until the workflow for the document is complete and the status is changed from pending to approved. So now I'll choose Save to save all the settings for the workflow. I'm returned to the Workflow Settings page and now the workflow I just created is listed under workflow name. So now I'll return to the specifications library and run through the steps of uploading and approving a document. You'll notice the approval status column added to the library since approval is now required for documents in this library. So for uploading a document I'm going to sign in as Jim Halpert who we saw earlier has a contributor permission level. Okay, so now I see I'm signed in as Jim here, and I'll add a document. Here's the document I want to upload. And you'll see the approval status right now is pending. Now when I refresh the page, you'll notice a new column was added to display the status of the workflow, which is now in progress. I did not have to manually start the workflow because I chose the setting to automatically initiate the workflow when a new document is added to the library. With the workflow in progress, tasks will have been created for the first tier of approval, which go to Phyllis and Stanley. 
by now they would have received a task notification email requesting them to approve the document with a link to the task list. Before I sign in as Phyllis to approve the document, I will demonstrate what a user sees with read-only permission, so I'll sign in as Aaron Hannon, who we saw earlier was in the read-only permission group. So now that I'm logged in as Aaron, I cannot see that document that Jim had uploaded. And I will not be able to see it until it has gone through all the approvals and has been approved for viewing. So next I'm going to sign in as the first approver, Phyllis. As an approver, I can see the document in the library with approval status of pending and the workflow is in progress. So as I mentioned, Phyllis as an approver would have received the email with a link to the task list. So I'm going to go here to the task list. I can see both tasks that were generated by the workflow for Phyllis as well as Stanley to approve the document. So I'll open the task that was assigned to Phyllis. In the task at the top here is a link to the document so I can open and review it. It shows me this was requested by Jim as he's the one that uploaded the document. Here's the comment that I entered as part of the workflow to appear on all tasks. And here is the due date, which is three days out from today's date. And in this comments box, I can add a comment if I'd like about the document. Down below are the buttons where I take action, where I can approve the document, reject it, cancel from this task, request changes, or reassign the task. And I'm going to choose to approve it. And back here in the task list, it shows that I have completed my task. And over here in the far right, shows the outcome is the document is approved. So next I will sign in as Stanley and approve the document as well. So here's Stanley's task. Open the task. Looks just like it did for Phyllis. Again, here's the link to review the document. The other information, I can add a comment if I like. And then I'll click Approve. Now that both Phyllis and Stanley have approved the document, my task has been created for Andy to approve the document as well. So before I sign in as Andy, I will view the status of the document in the library. So we'll open the specification library. And because we're still waiting for one more approval, the approval status is still pending for the document and the workflow is in progress. So I'll sign in as Andy. And then I'll go to the task list, open the task assigned to Andy, and I will approve the document. So in the task list, it shows Andy has completed the task and has approved the document. And now that all of the approvals have been made, I'll go back to the specification library. And notice now for the document, the approval status is approved. And for the workflow, everything has been approved as well. Now the document is visible to all the site users. So I'm going to sign back in as Aaron, again, who is the read-only person. And now Aaron, who has read-only permission level, can see the document. So there you have seen one example of using the approval workflow template that comes with SharePoint Server 2010.